Uh, I will tell you how I met Professor Evandro during my talk. I will mention that and I will tell things I learned from him. But I need first to acknowledge some people, I guess. Hold on. Yeah, here. I need to acknowledge some people, so I want to ask you all and the attendees why I thank several people to start reading those sentences and picking the ones that today uh, may represent your thoughts. So I want to take this time to thank Professor Evandro. I feel very honored to be here. Uh, there are several people that could be in my place you have so many great people that have worked with you over the years. And I just can conciliate that to think that I'm speaking for them uh, using their voice. So thank you very much. Thank you to your family. They, they have always uh, welcomed me at every time. And I want also to thank my friends at the board our president, Dr. Kobayashi, our senior vice president, Dr. Matsushima, for making the point to have this uh, Congress in your honor. And Juan, and of course, when to putting all this together. So while I think, I think you have learned or read these sentences and pick the one, the number that represent you today, because I, we will need that to understand what I'm talking about. So what I will be speaking is things I learned with Dr. Oliveira. And if we do a little experiment and ask a hundred people to speak about this man, we will find out that this a hundred people picked very different subjects because he He's such a guy, he has made such an impact everywhere that all the fields uh, can be touched in their uh, thinking about Professor Evandro. But if we boil down all these thoughts about him, we will probably find a coincidence. Uh, we will probably find that most of these people will agree to say and me together that he's a very talented guy and uh, talent is something very important in our field, in the surgical field. We used to think in the surgical field that if someone has a big talent, just like Professor Vandru, he's in the right place. But we surgeons, we should think sometimes and we express that if, if talent is small, we may want to advise the person to choose another career. This is something we believe, this is something we speak about in the surgical field. This is like a, a fixed belief in our field. There are others, some more in some places, in some centers, some more in others. And another one of these fixed beliefs is that not, not all surgical parts of a procedure have been created equal that there are differences between the parts of the procedures. Some are more important than others. And those important parts of the procedures must be performed by very talented surgeons. While the other parts, they may be reserved for less experienced, less talented surgeons. So this is a second fixed belief in the surgical field. And there are third, third one that surgeons, they start learning, but up at the point in their careers, they reach a plateau and there are not more else to learn. So these three are fixed beliefs in our surgical field, in neurosurgery as well. But I must tell you that none of them, not one of these three fixed beliefs I learned from Dr. Evandro de Oliveira. So, what did I learn from him? I have been observing Professor Evandro for a long time, more than 20 years, you can tell by the picture. And I have been observing him as if he, he were a puzzle. I, I was keen in what made this guy tick. 
the value he placed in, into things, how he organized his work, because that made a lot of sense to me. And I could not put that into words, but uh, as I kept teaching my students, as I kept uh, operating on my patients, and more and more since I reached seniority in neurosurgery, that had made a lot of sense to me, that have made me bounce back immediately after unwanted results, that kept me learning, growing, enjoying what I do every day. So he really has done a major service in my life. So I, I, probably, I probably didn't have the words because the words were not there yet. At the same time, I was observing Professor Vandru in the social sciences. Uh, several theories were coming up, theories about our beliefs, our mindsets. This has become into a school of thought now housed in this uh, institution that is housing us at Stanford University. Uh, the major name in this research is Professor Dweck. And this research into mindsets uh, has made a huge impact, not only in uh, the social sciences, but has spread uh, everywhere and has become uh, proven in these 20 and plus years and have uh, been reaching policies uh, national and international educational policies. So if you have kids, you want to have a look at this. And what is this mindset all about? Mindset are the beliefs we have about our capacity and the capacity people has. And the mindsets, they may be resumed, summarized into a fixed or entity mindset and a growth or process mindset. So anytime we think that skills, abilities, uh, traits are fixed, carved in stone, let's say, we are displacing a certain type of mindset. Just as these two, one and two uh, sentences here. So those are the fixed mindset uh, sentences and for uh, this state, there is a risk uh, when we uh, encompass those beliefs, there is a risk because once we don't think that we can improve, that things are carved in stone, failure becomes a major problem. Failure is something to be avoided. Uh, otherwise, it will hurt ourselves. Uh, in the other way, there are other uh, mindsets there is the process or growth mindset. In this state of mind, we think that things can be improved. Uh, the number three and four sentences, if you pick those, those represent a different mindset uh, in which we believe that through practice, through training, and above all through method, we can become better. We can improve attention, memory, skills, we can become better surgeons, if you will, and that's the growth mindset. It's not that the growth mindset doesn't find failure. We do, Any, anyone does. But when we face trouble, we do not get discouraged. We understand problem as a way, uh, uh, we understand failure as a problem that needs to be dealt with need to be learned from and we need to get past them. So in fact, we, we want to have challenge. So what I'm saying to you tonight, in Brazil at least, is that Professor Evandro de Oliveira is the paramount example of a growth mindset in neurosurgery. You may be asking me for evidence. I do have uh, exhibit A, his post-surgery behavior, whenever he finished a surgery that for me, in my fixed mindset, was perfect. He would say, whenever I finish, I start thinking, how can I do better next time? 
uh, he, whenever he was discussing an approach, he would say, I did this such and such in the past, this how I do it now. And he would uh, discuss and say why he, he had changed. Um, when in his courses with heads, he would not jump to the major part of the procedure. In fact, every step counted, every step count. He would set up the drapes. He would uh, position the head with the same importance that the major part in any, any procedure. And mostly he would insist anytime in a clean, spotless field of work. Mostly because uh, for Professor Vandro, we need to see the anatomy, every structure count. Anyone that has operated with him knows the heavy signal he would give if an innocent vein was taken out of one of his patients. And uh, if you want exhibits, uh, his lab, the way he thought about lab is a, a great exhibit, a great evidence. Uh, only someone that thinks he and the others are in the process of becoming would give such importance to the lab work as Professor Vandro does. And he has been laboring and speaking about uh, and to discuss complications as a fast track in our specialty to make us improve as surgeons. Uh, Professor Vandro raised the bar to every part of a surgical procedure. He would name and give importance to any of them. He would raise the bar and once the bar was raised, he would not accept lower. And that uh, provoked that everyone working with, with him would very soon become involved with his or her uh, learning curve for any part of these procedures. And this in part explains the high quality people that have been working with him over the years. Anyone looking at these people from a fixed mindset would say simply they are chosen. But in fact, these were people learning under the Evandro mindset effect, learning very fast. These were all people learning. If they think about their, uh, their time, this is how they will feel. They will agree with me about that. So what, what is the effect, Evandro effect in neurosurgery? A big quality leap in anything he was involved, surgery, course, Congress, society. And uh, he would insist in uh, speaking about uh, surgery and the parts of surgery. And if we think it's hard to speak about improvement, improving if the matter we are working with are people, people's brains. It required someone with Evandro's scientific sincerity to tell us that there are different and better ways of doing things. Because he put value in every part of a surgical procedure and wouldn't have fun. If you were close to him, you would see he was having fun while doing that. He showed us the roadmap to self-improvement. He proved to us that there are more to learn, that no one is yet ready. Everyone is becoming. And because he has always insisted in discussing complications, he has proved to us that neurosurgery is an endless road of learning, that we need to keep uh, involved, especially the senior neurosurgeons, that we keep to, to be passionate for what we do. And this is truly what I learned from him. And what I want to say to finish is that among all things that Professor Vandru has been doing over the years, we should not uh, let out one of his most important contributions to neurosurgery, his mindset, 
his mindset is one of his most important contributions to our field. I am deeply honored to be um, involved with this, to be close to you, Professor. I and my family, my husband, Antonio, is also a surgeon. We tap into your mindset every day in our work. We think about how you think. We value that. And at night, I keep thinking that the prophets and the angels, they did uh they did speak to you in your dreams so that you show us every day how to do surgery neurosurgery and also to live because you face your challenges and very big challenges so i go full circle to say that i learn from you neurosurgery i keep learning with you about life thank you so much for listening thank you guys